So the first thing I would like to uh, to do is to, of course, um, uh, thank to the organizers to the organizers for come, inviting me once again here to the to the conference. It's been really really great. Uh, I would like to draw your your attention to this title, you know, "Medicine: A Big Step Towards Curing Cancer," because obviously this is a, a very challenging issue. This is the message that we're launching to to the society. Uh, this is the message that uh, is being heard by by people, by patients, and also by by regulators. And and, and obviously, as you know, big promises requires because uh, uh, rises big expectations. So the question here is. Uh, uh, whether uh, this is true or how far we are from reality, so how big is these steps so for in, in terms of addressing this, uh, it is obvious that we have to uh, keep in mind very much which are the main problems to address when facing uh, cancer. You know? And this is very easy, I mean, this is obvious. Uh, we need early diagnosis of the tumors and we need better treatments that's not new. You know? So how should we deal with the early diagnosis? Why do we need an early diagnosis? This is uh, uh, mainly to avoid the invasion of metastatic uh, spread of the disease because this is what kills the patient. I mean, it's, it's very rarely occurs that a tumor solid kills the patient if it's not through a metastatic process. So uh, it should be in very specific places. You know? and, uh, otherwise, most of the most of the cancers is is uh, the the. The end of the disease is because of the metastatic spread. No? We have some tools now which are uh, coming on the, on, the, on the clinical practice, which is a predictive medicine. No? Uh, we know that some tumors the, uh, which are inherited, uh, they're, they're linked to very specific mutations in genes that we can identify. So we can use this uh, predictive medicine to uh, screen the genetic backgrounds on, on, in, in population screenings and, 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 and uh, here you have some examples with the BRCA1, MLH1, RAPC for colorectal cancer, or breast cancer. So at least we, we, we have a chance to give these people a, a, an opportunity to be, to be follow up. You know? uh, then obviously is the question of the good diagnostic biomarkers in human bodily fluids. Uh, uh, it is true that we have some examples of, of uh, and this, uh, a bunch of list of, of genes and biomarkers which I which are potentially useful for prediction and for, for prognostic, especially for prognostics. Uh, this is one of them, you will find much more than this, so uh, you name it. During, we have been spending, during the last 20 years, I would say, uh, a lot of efforts in, in, in many, many studies, and especially during the last 10 years in which we've been able to use high throughput technologies to find those biomarkers. And at some point, what we have, almost every one of us has a very nice list of biomarkers that are, are kind of uh, telling you that they're the best ones to be used in the clinics. No? The, the, the reality, though, is, is that uh, very few, very few biomarkers are specific enough for cancers, for, for cancer cells. No? Perhaps with the exception of HER2 and, and, and some others, uh, most of the biomarkers that we have and we have identified are useful for prognosis, but not for anything else. So in terms of, of nanomedicine, uh, uh, this is a challenging question because it's, uh, they're good, but not so good enough to, to ensure a specific targeting, and this is crucial. No? Uh, uh, and later, also, the, uh, we need better uh, imaging detection systems. This is more on the side of the, of the uh, bioimaging devices and medical devices and biosensors, perhaps. That, but nanomedicine also has something to do in here if you use quantum dots and this kind of stuff. No? So, uh, uh, going forward, what about therapeutic issues? Uh, treatment toxicity is certainly an, an, an issue. No? Um, we need new drugs that should show lower toxicity profiles. That's, an, that's not that's a new. No? And the main reason is because mainly the drugs doesn't distinguish between uh, normal and, and even healthy and, and, and cancer and tumor cells. So uh, we need those drugs to selectively target the tumors, the tumor tissues. Uh, at this point, we don't have any drug, which is, uh, at least to my knowledge, that, that will comply with this. So nanomedicine, in that sense, might, might, uh, might help us into solving or at least into improving these, these issues of, of selection. No? However, as I was saying, that um, uh, targeting is, is not an easy issue. So uh, uh, unless we solve the, the, the issue of the targeting of these of these drugs to the to the tumor cells, probably this will not be f not be fixed. Except if uh, if if we if we rely on the APR effect and and uh, in combined therapy with lower tox profile uh, compounds. No? 
Uh, what about the generation of tumor resistance? This is the other question which is rising up very, very frequently in, in, in tumor treatments. No? So uh, the tumors are a little bit like, uh, they have a very high rate of mutation, so they, they like, uh, they behave a little bit like a, a, a flu virus, no? so they're constantly mutating. This, uh, this has a consequence in terms of, of treatment because drugs uh, at some point, uh, tumors become resistant to the drugs. No? It is especially important now, nowadays, in which most of the other compounds that are being uh, pushed to the to the clinics are are mm, targeted compounds or compounds that are trying to target very specific molecules in signaling cascades, in very specific pathways. So I, I can assure you that the the, uh, the tumors will not take too much uh, too much time to to overcome uh, that. That inhibition and probably uh, probably because of mutations, so uh, resistance will appear uh, uh, easily. Mm -hmm. So we need uh, uh, we need to know which is the molecular background of the tumor when giving the the therapy. This is uh, this is good for some cases in which, for instance, you, you're not going to treat any tumor with just a if You have mutations in your eyes. So that's a, that's an clear example. The other thing is that uh, uh, one way to overcome resistance is to use combined therapy. And uh, up to now, um, although we can give some combined therapy uh, to combined regimes to to, uh, to patients, uh, we're expecting that nanomedicine will provide us a tool for increasing this combined therapy, and this this might be a solution for for. This situation. Then there's the MDR system uh, effects. These protein complexes in the in the membrane, the proteins which are pumping out the, the drugs. No, uh, we need drugs that will avoid the MDR system if possible, or non-medicine systems that will avoid them. No, although it's uh, probably it's not going to be easy at all. No? Um, uh, so going back to the main question of the, uh, the very beginning, no big step towards screwing cancer, not to make this promise of reality. We have been discussing during these days, uh, which are the main points that uh, we have to take into into account when designing drug delivery systems. Here you have a list of them: manufacturing methods and control processes, well-defined cycle, uh, physical chemical properties, uh, to get biodistribution, biostability in vivo, toxicity issues, implementation in a clinical setting, regulatory of course, and social uh, societal issues. And, and at some point they should allow personalized medicine and combined therapy. You know? um, one, I'm, I'm, I'm not going for every one of these items, uh, but uh, I just wanted to list them here very, very briefly, and perhaps I will just comment on some of them. Scalability is one of the issues. Uh, we have talked uh, here, and uh, I heard several comments about this, this question, and this is, this is critical. I mean, uh, it, uh, one thing is what happened in the laboratory, the other thing is when uh, you, you you need to scale up uh, a drug compound many many times, and this happens uh, uh, to us when 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 working with small molecules. The same thing. So the the chemical process, the chemical synthesis that you use for obtaining the small molecule, then it has to be sometimes completely changed for a new one just to be able to scale up the, the product. So it's expected that this is going to happen uh, also in in, in nanomeds, no? nanomedicine. Uh, and reproducibility of, of the patches, this is, this is, uh, this is crucial. No? And I have a, another one, which is the storage conditions. So ideally at room temperature, why? Because uh, we don't have too much possibilities in the hospitals to, to uh, keep drugs in, in, in at minus 8 and minus 20 on, on in conditions which, has, uh, uh, which are not pre, uh, room temperature. So this is an ideal uh, goal. No? Uh, what about the, uh, the physical chemical property as well? We have talked these days about whether the nature of the carriers is very important for clearance, for toxicity, for treatment regimes. We're talking about organic and inorganic, biodegradable or not uh, carriers, whether the system is encapsulating drugs or is, is uh, carrying the drugs because the use of linkers. And this, is, this is crucial because depending on the type of linker, we will have a different drug release and, and we have to know all these issues. We have to know whether the drugs um, will release the drug in the endosomal compartment, and we have to go to the lysosome. We have to uh, get inside the cell by another system. So this is crucial. All this kind of uh, biological uh, um, knowledge is, is fundamental. The use of ionic or cationic uh, um, carriers is also good for nucleic acid. In the case of cationics, are good for nucleic acid, but they also uh, are known to be more toxic. So uh, we have to overcome these all these all these points. No? Shape, size, and surface have been told already. They have a lot of things to do, uh, to say in terms of biodistribution, passive targeting, internalization, degradation, also protein binding, 
uh, tumor recognition, toxicity, all these issues. No? Uh, what about protein serum binding? This is also a very important issue. Uh, this, this, this is crucial because it might make the whole system uh, fail from, from success. No? Blood stability increments have to be properly addressed. Uh, we know that fast clearance uh, are good for uh, nanomedicines, with, for nanosystems which are designed for imaging diagnosis, but not for, for treatment, so we need longer, longer uh, clearance times. Uh, and this depends very much on processes of uh, on, on on the system of sequestration that it has the system uh, the the regulatory system either by the kidney or by the liver uh, whether non biodegradable scarves are confined and where um, the uptake by the reticulum the systems and also what's called the ABC phenomenon which is the accelerated blood clearance like uh, the systems that are covered by by, uh, by PEC. No? Um, Biodistribution models, this is a critical question. Uh, uh, we, uh, we know that when we have tests, uh, drug delivery systems in, in vivo models, the distribution changes very much if you're using a cancer model or a healthy mice. So, and, and the question is uh, how, how to rely on that data. So if you use a, a cancer in vivo mice, the distribution, because of the APR effect, is much more uh, go in, in, in favor of that fact that the drug might work, that if you use a healthy animal, then you might increase the level of uptake by the liver of, or, or the excretion. So um, it's not easy to, to decide which is the best model to, to test the, uh, the drug delivery systems. The drug loading capacity, reconstitution for administration, these are things that are very important for potential, uh, for potential uses in the clinical in the clinical practice. Uh, like the use of systems that might allow the administration of, of these systems through oral subcutaneous or inhalatory uh, uh, administrations, which are much better than the typical IV administration. Um, uh, another very important question that has been mentioned before is the, is the cell biology uh, interactions with the drug delivery system. So there's a bunch of things that might be affecting does the normal cell biology of metastasis by the systems. And this is something that is very poorly, very poorly studied. One of them is the cell addition and differentiation. Here you have an example uh, of, of, of our laboratory when we were testing uh, X-ray diagram nanoparticles in, in the glioma cell and U87. So we, we don't know exactly why, but uh, when we were giving high levels of, of, of high concentration, what we considered was a high concentration of, of these nanoparticles to the medium, uh, as you see here, um, the cells uh, become detached and become uh, capable of growing like in these big clumps of cells. So this is suggesting, although we don't know exactly what's happening here, um, this is suggesting that perhaps uh, some particles might be interacting with cell addition molecule systems and then they might escape from, from monoiki. So most of the cells, uh, I'm sure that most of you know, but just in case I will explain it. So uh, most of the cells are, are, are programmed so in a way that if, if a normal cell gets detached, it has a specific cell that's programmed that we kill the cell, which is called an It's not because no one's, uh, the body doesn't want an liver cell just to go somewhere else and grow into the brain. So um, this system is overcome by a tumor cell. So the tumor cells have the ability, the capability of, of detaching themselves, uh, surviving to this cell the problems which are shut down and then going somewhere else to just to, to metastasize. So uh, if, if um, this, this is just a possibility because we don't know if this is what's happening here, as I was saying, but if, if cells uh, acquire the, capa the, the, the capacity of uh, growing in uh, uh, non-attachment conditions because of the presence of nanoparticles, then we have to keep an eye on that and see what happens with, with these uh, attachment mechanisms. Um, so uh, much more things. Uh, we were talking about um, uh, the use of antibodies or ligands. This is also interesting because I, I didn't hear anyone uh, talking about what happened when you use an antibody or a ligand. So we know that some, anti so, some antibodies will, will block down uh, both of them, antibodies and ligands, they react against surface receptors. So, and, and the receptors are on the surface of the membrane because of, of uh, of, of uh, a very specific function, no? because they need to be there. No? So if you if you inhibit a, a, a memory receptor with an antibody, it, it might happen that it will inhibit that pathway. So we have to be sure that what's going to happen if we are inhibiting that pathway 
but that's not in the normal cell, in the, in the tumor cell, but in the normal cell. No? Same thing happens if you, if you use ligands. No? If you use ligands, probably you will, most likely will be activating that pathway. So we have to be sure that uh, what are we doing. So, uh, of course, it might help us to get internalized the, the, the drug delivery system, but we have to be sure uh, how is the cell going to react to those activation or inactivation of the pathways. No? For instance, uh, the use of CD44 antibodies themselves are capable of killing, of, they have a cytotoxic effect because they block the CD44 receptor. No? So this is an example. No? Uh, also, it might use changes in the vesicle trafficking within cells. This is something that has been mentioned uh, before in the conference. No? Um, other questions regarding in the internalization, so mainly the pathways. So we have to uh, be very careful about what we need if it's an endosomal escape, go to the lysosome, uh, about the MDLC, if they cell therapy, penetrating peptides might be a solution too. And, and also keep in mind that some early endosomes might recirculate drugs and systems to the, to the, to the surface. No? Uh, more about brain broad, uh, uh, brain broad barrier crossing, uh, some like glutathione, glucose, or gene containing peptides might help to target issues. This is an important question. I put it here because I'm not going to talk about the APR because we have talked already too much about that question. No? But um, I would like to do, uh, uh, um, I don't know, just to launch a kind of uh, uh, um, something to think about. No? Um, as I was saying before, uh, the reason why a patient dies in often is, is because of metastasis. No? And, and it is obvious that the APR effect has a very nice, it works nicely when you have a, a solid tumor, but the uh, best treatment for a solid tumor is surgery. And this is what normally happens in the clinical practice. So you have a tumor and you detect it, you will take care of by surgery. So uh, what's left on the patient? So probably the micrometastasis and the macrometastasis, if any. So metastasis, they may have APR effect, so we still my my rely on the APR effect of our nanomedicines, but uh, micrometastasis will not show any elevation in the vascular level. Eh? So at some point, it might be questionable if if the uh, this APR effect will be kept, uh, or it will make sense uh, in in a, in a tumor patient who has been under surgery. No? Um, of course, you might might argue, and, and, and I think that you're right if you say so. No? that uh, the question is uh, perhaps not just to eradicate the tumor cell, but just to keep the disease as a chronic disease. So every time that we have a metastasis which is big enough, it will be killed by the, by the system. No? If it's too small, probably it will not get that point. No? So in, uh, here, again, the, the lack of good biomarkers and specific biomarkers for targeting the, the, the nanocompounds and uh, targeting these, these systems, uh, it might be crucial. So uh, well, this is just something to, to, to think about it. Um, also, as it has been mentioned, number of receptors on the surface it might influence the uptake. Uh, uh, some receptors might pump out also drugs. We know that the use, for instance, of follow receptors, uh, they're good for, for diagnosis, but not so good for treatment because um, systems are, are pumped out. Uh, this was about the APR effect, uh, just to show you the how uh, we were saying that uh, not all drugs or very few drugs were, were capable of being secreted by the filter by the kidney. This is one of these cases. Uh, you see this, here is the kidney, this is the, the bladder, and then the, the system is getting more and more accumulated in the, in the, uh, in the this was a supranious tumor. Uh, uh, in true, what happened is what I was saying, so surgeons remove this kind of tumor, so this is far from reality. Um, and then toxicity issues, I'm not going through this because we have gone many, many times, no? But I would like also to comment on the fact that uh, when dealing with cancer, the truth is that uh, most of the chemotherapy compounds that we're being used nowadays in the clinics, they're highly toxic. Uh, they're highly toxic. I remember the first time I saw the results from, I think it was a phase one or phase, the end of a phase two study of a, of a drug which is currently marketed. Uh, I thought that it was everything completely wrong. I mean, I, think, I thought that my, my first feeling was that it is killing everything. I mean, <laughs> this, 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 I saw toxicity everywhere. No? So, and, uh, but the main feeling of, of that review panel was, was, was completely different, was that, yeah, yeah, we know because this is a genotoxic drug, so uh, it, it has to be toxic. The question is, as, as, uh, as all of you know, is how we gonna dose later which kind of dose regime we will have with this, no? because then 
that great between toxicity and, and efficacy is when it, it makes things go through. No? So the same thing has to be applied to nanomedicine. Sometimes I have the feeling that we are trying to get end up with a perfect nanomedicine which is completely safe and non-toxic. And uh, at least if we are dealing with, with uh, chemotherapy compounds, perhaps this is a dream which will never will get that far. No? And probably we don't have to get that far. No? So my, my message is that as far as we improve what we have in the clinics, in the cancer field, then it will be it will be a great advantage. You know? uh, of course, this is different if you go to another field. No? So if you're trying to do something for cosmetics, so probably you will wouldn't like to have any kind of toxicity at all. No? But this is different. No? Um, uh, and that implementation in the clinical setting, there's something from all these things that are in this list. I will concentrate in the last one: clinical perception. That's very important. Uh, clinical perception is fundamental because otherwise we have no chance to succeed on, on, on implementing this in the clinics. Yeah. And what about regulations? So probably the most important question is how to adapt methodologies. Uh, here we have an example with the IC50. We know now that if, if we do MPT studies and tox uh, toxicity studies in, in, uh, to, to, to define the IC50 of, of uh, drug delivery resistance, probably we have to go to longer times. You know? So if with the small molecules, we go to 24, 48 hours. Uh, in this case, at 24, 48 hours, we were not seeing anything. So, uh, and now we see that the, that the liver system works as much as, as, the, as, the, as the chemotherapy compound if you go to a longer time, so this is also important to keep in mind. No? Uh, and last but not least, uh, just in a way to introduce some other talks that will, will follow. Uh, personalized medicine is a very good option. The uh, question is how nanomedicine might influence personalized medicine. And combining therapy, in which I think that nanomedicine might, might, might really, uh, might really uh, represent a, a step forward. No? Obviously, in protein diagnostic, these are medical devices, biosensors, and imaging uh, systems based on nanoparticles, which are under development. So, uh, thank you very much. I think this was the last one. Uh, I'll be glad to, to answer your questions. Thanks.